he ends up saying yes and she ends up saying no but she also goes into why she says no and it was like girl you never said any of this <laughs> like what? What's up you guys welcome back to the channel it's your girl JD here back with another video so as promised this is part two to my review of the season three or third season of love is blind over on Netflix it just came out not too long ago and if you guys would like to check out part one I'm going to put that in the corner over here I just would definitely suggest y'all watch part one obviously before y'all check this out because in this video we are going to be discussing all the couples yet again like i did in part one however this is going to be the other half of the show basically from the weddings their decision at the altar and then also the reunion so that's what we're going to be talking about in this video so one thing i was suggesting in the other video is that they basically give the couples an option to not even make it to the altar. All it quits so that they can avoid embarrassing the other person, themselves, or you know, their families that came to obviously see them. But unfortunately, you know, they want the drama, so I can understand that. So they did all go to the altar, but okay, of course, not everybody said yes, but let's hop right into it. First, we have Alexa and Brennan, and they both said yes to each other. They got married. It seems as though they were both like straight shooters. This is what I want. We're gonna go ahead and just, you know, put a ring on it, literally. And they seemed as though they kind of worked out well. However, I did mention in the first video that I honestly feel as though Brennan is a little bit too much of a pushover. Like he would just get walked all over, honestly, in their relationship. And that, that's just really how I feel about the whole situation. Just watching them interact with each other. It just seemed as though he was always the one to just kind of compromise and just be okay with everything. And Alexa was the one that was just calling the shots and telling him like what she wanted. But I didn't really hear much of what he wanted personally. So that's just what I think about their relationship ultimately. When it came to the reunion though, they didn't really have much to say. The only time Brennan really even talked was in response to Cole, which we're gonna get into, but he was having a back and forth, Cole anyway, with um, Zinnab. But that was interesting in itself. We're, we're gonna get into that. But they didn't really have much to talk about. In terms of their married life, it seemed pretty chill but to be honest, kind of boring all at the same time because it was like, how are y'all not having any arguments? Unless, unless they're doing what I would suggest to all couples to do, which would be to have those arguments in private, but do not bring them up to your friends and or family or in public because it will be used against you more than likely somewhere down the line. So just keep it to yourself, you know? Moving on to Raven and SK. This one shocked me. I'm gonna be honest, it did shock me, but I understood why it happened and it makes sense, okay? So Raven was the first one to answer. She said, yes, I do. And SK was the one to decline and say, no, um, he doesn't take her to be his lawfully wedded wife. And Raven took it well. She took it on the chin. She was a trooper, cause I would have broken down right then and there. I think she was trying not to like mess up her makeup in reality, but show she took that on the chin, cause I would have been a hot mess, okay? I, I wouldn't even care who was watching me if my family was looking at me. If the television, like the person who was like filming had the camera in my face was looking at me, I do not care. <laughs> yeah, I don't care, okay? But she took it very well and he took the time. He took like a quick minute. He was like, listen, I just don't feel like it's the right time. I love you. And she even noticed that he was upset about the answer. Like he didn't really want to say no, but he knew that he kind of had to. And with respect to obviously his answer in terms of going deeper into why he said that, I think he realized that as of right now, it was gonna be too much to ask of her to be there for him through grad school right now. Cause you know, he's gonna be in a totally different state. I think she's gonna remain in Dallas and then he's going to be in California, I think he said, doing his master's program. And it would just be too much, I feel, on them both to have a marriage with someone that you can't see every day 
especially within the first couple of years of it, those are very important years. You know, the, that's like the foundation. So if you have a rocky foundation right out the gate, it's just, it's not gonna work. So I think SK is very smart for saying no. And I definitely agreed with his no after hearing his reasoning because I think if he had said yes, it would have been a little bit selfish, in my opinion, to ask of someone to just be okay with their uh, partner not being there, not being present for them. So we find out in the reunion that they're actually still dating. So I thought that that was going to happen, honestly, because... It was a realistic reason that he gave as to why he said no. He wasn't playing with her feelings or emotions. He just saw it for what it was. And I was proud of him for doing that. Because if he had said yes, like I said, it would have been kind of selfish. So I'm happy that he analyzed the situation and he gave the appropriate response because, you know, it just would have been kind of like a hot mess. So they're still dating. They're still seeing each other. I think he's still doing his master's program. So, you know, there's a lot of back and forth with traveling and all that. But I'm happy that they're able to still be at that point. It looks as though they have a very mature relationship. I'm just gonna be honest, compared to the others, okay? The fact that Raven was able to see why, you know, and understand the reasoning behind why he said no to her at the altar, I appreciate that about her. That shows her maturity and how she is a very understanding person, I feel. I feel like if it was any of these other ladies that I'm about to mention, <laughs> they would have probably bolted. So yeah, but I'm happy that they're still dating. Also, they did talk about the whole conversation that went down, I think with Artis and Nancy had about Raven. Raven and SK's relationship, watching that back, I was like, why are you so involved in their relationship? It was just weird. Clearly you are still butthurt over this rejection, but you are trying your best to be okay with Nancy. You know, it just seemed like he was settling and he was not settled in that relationship at all. Let's be honest. <laughs> but I came up and SK, you know, set Barty straight. He was like, yeah, don't do that again. <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> So yeah, I think SK is quiet. However, he is not a pushover. He's very much so different from Brennan. I think he is what Brennan needs, like that type of personality. Like, yeah, you could be chill, cool, but don't let people walk all over you. That's different. So I'm glad he put his foot down. And then also he was, uh, of course, very happy that Raven had shut down that whole artiste and her conversation. He was like, listen, I'm fine with my man. There's a reason why I didn't pick you. Let's move on. <laughs> like that was it. I was like, damn. <laughs> but anyways, moving on to Colleen and Matt. So Colleen and Matt make it to the altar and they both end up saying, yes, they get married. So they make the second couple to get married out out of the bunch and me personally I said in the other video I do think that they kind of have a rocky road ahead of them because Colleen she is definitely thin-skinned she doesn't seem to stand up for herself and Matt I think he notices that and he is a hothead. I've noticed that he is definitely not an easygoing person, completely different from SK and Brennan. He would blow up at the drop of a dime. Like anything happened, anything that was said, like he is mad. It was just over really dumb stuff more often than not. So I would just be like, Matt, what are we mad about this time? Like, I, I just don't understand. So I think they have a rocky road because clearly Matt still has trust issues. He's made that clear throughout the episodes of the show over and over again that he still has issues of trusting people more specifically trusting his partner in a relationship and rightfully so i understand why but it was like my guy okay at the reunion they end up talking or discussing basically what had happened between colleen and cole their conversation at the pool and how I guess Cole had basically said, you know, like you would be my physical type. Like you are typically what I would date. And then also Colleen had said, if it was like a situation where I was single and I was at a bar, I would definitely give you my number because you are also my physical type. You know what I mean? So it wasn't anything necessarily wrong. I personally feel, however, I can understand how I guess someone could probably take it as, oh, so you find them attractive, you know, but I feel like a really insecure person would probably get really mad at that, honestly. I feel like you might have some questions, you know, you could ask questions and be like, well, do you like have feelings for this person? But don't just blow up, you know what I mean? Like don't just start shouting and like having this like heated argument with someone, just weird over 
like that conversation, really, it just, it seemed like it was just over the top. However, in the end, both Cole and Colleen, you know, they apologized. Cole had apologized to Matt and then Colleen had apologized to Zinnab because Zinnab was with Cole. So I appreciated, obviously, them just, you know, putting it to rest. However, when it came to Cole and Zinnab, you could clearly tell they did not put it to rest. So we're gonna be moving on to them now. Cole and Zinnab, I honestly feel as though as soon as I saw their differing personalities in the pods themselves, I was like, you would think that opposites attract, but not in this situation. I think their opposites were a little bit too opposite <laughs> to attract each other. You know, that's just how I feel about it. I mentioned it in the part one video that I did. I personally feel that Cole can be very immature. However, I think that he brought a playfulness that Zinnab needed because she was always very serious. Her way of playing was being passive aggressive and being kind of like sarcastic, like making snarky, sarcastic, passive aggressive comments at Cole. Whenever, for example, he would leave stuff on the ground or leave a towel somewhere. They were at, I think, on their honeymoon. And Zinnab, you know, when they're trying to have this like romantic time together, she's just like, well, can you like leave your towel you know, anywhere else but, you know, the ground or like the table, the coffee table. <laughs> like it, it would just be things like that. It was like, why didn't you just tell this man, hey, hon, next time, you know, could you just put your towel up and your clothes up? Like it's just all over the floor. Like there was a way to have worded that. It was just very snarky, you know, and it just be kind of irritating sometimes. Sometimes she was funny. Sometimes it was just annoying. So I understood why Cole was kind of annoyed too, you know? I feel honestly with Zinnab, her main issue, not just, you know, the snarky comments every now and again, her main issue was insecurities. I feel like she was very insecure in herself and that she needed to go get some confidence when it came to her and feeling attractive, you know, just individually on her own, like just feeling like she's an attractive person that's worthy of love. I personally feel like she threw a lot of that onto Cole and almost everything he would say, she would find some type of double-sided meaning to get mad about, you know? And it was just like, oh my God. And like you're, you're killing me here if i was cold i would have left <laughs> if they gave me an option if the show gave me the option like i said at the beginning to leave the relationship before making it to the altar i would have done it i'm so serious the fact that cole was still kind of in it because in the end when it came to the altar he ends up saying yes and she ends up saying no but she also goes into why she says no and it was like girl you never said any of this <laughs> like what? it was wild but you know i didn't talk about part one how right before they went to the altar they actually ended up having a little spat so cole was trying to do something nice he was trying to cook for her but you know the, the chicken was unseasoned and on top of that he grabbed the wrong glass for the white wine she was kind of miffed about that she was just kind of like oh this is kind of why you need a stemmed glass instead of one that you would hold in your hand type of thing and from there it just seemed like they were just arguing over really dumb stuff. However, when I say arguing, I personally feel like Zinnab was doing most of it. <laughs> she was really, I think, in a mood. It just escalated so quickly. It started off with like clearly Cole trying to do something nice and it just went completely left. It was like, I don't understand what's going on. And then somehow Cole ended up asking her like hey are you bipolar and i was like oh no oh no don't ask that because you know like especially people that you know suffer with that uh illness like they would definitely not take too kindly for you just like basically saying that all willy-nilly that was just a rough night all around and it just was a pity that it happened right before their wedding as well and then you know they had the whole bachelor party bachelorette and Zinnab, of course, has to kind of unload a lot of what she claims Cole said to her. Like, honestly, what she claims, because I do feel like Zinnab has this weird ability to turn things that have been said around to fit her narrative. <laughs> like, I'm the victim 
feel bad for me. Kind of like Natalie from season two. <laughs> like it just was like, ugh, you know? So that's just kind of how I felt about Zinup. It just seemed very, ugh. like really girl, get some confidence in yourself. Like it just felt like she kept putting so much on Cole. Like everything was Cole's fault. She had no part to play in their relationship's demise. Like none. The lack of accountability for me is, woo. Wow. Anyway, but moving on. It just was really unfortunate that that happened. And then of course they go into the bachelorette party. She unloads everything on the ladies that she claims Cole said. So of course they were taking her side. Cause I do feel like women tend to have like a natural echo chamber when it comes to other women. Even if you aren't friends with them, once you know them and once they're in a similar situation to you, like for example, about to be married or whatnot, yeah, echo chamber, okay? They will say to you whatever you want them to say. <laughs> I feel like men tend to be a lot more honest with each other. If you're being an a-hole, they're gonna tell you being an a-hole. Personally, when it came to the wedding, I feel as though Zinub kind of blindsided Cole. I'm just going to be honest. Even though occasionally she would say some things whenever Cole would ask her, like that's what I appreciated about Cole is that he was very upfront about his feelings. <laughs> you know, very honest, like blunt even. Even Zinub said that. Even she realized that he's very bluntly honest, but she said in the beginning that's something that she appreciates about him, but it could also hurt her. You know, I feel like I agree with her in that regard, is that even though you appreciate the honesty, it doesn't mean that it doesn't still hurt, which is facts, okay? But when it came to Zunub, I felt like she wasn't honest with her feelings. She was very, very passive aggressive, like I said already. So a lot of what I think she maybe had said to herself in her head, I think she thought she said it out loud because Cole, blindsided i could clearly tell on his face he just like what the heck is going on while she is holding this man's hand after he said i do to her oh looks up at her for her answer and zinub says no i can't say no to you i don't because you have single-handedly ruined my self-confidence you have and what is wild to me is that she says you have single-handedly ruined my confidence in myself and it's just like chica sis how the hell do you let one person do that to you? That means you came into that process and into that relationship ultimately already broken. That's what that means. You shouldn't have even been in this process. Any person that she probably would have been with, she would have probably had the same reaction to and said no to any of those other men. I'm just gonna be honest. Even if it wasn't Cole, she would have said no. Because she has this knack for finding negatives in anything. I just thought that was so funny that Nancy had called Raven a negative person when she was talking to Bartise. Really and truly, it's Zinub. Zinub is a negative person. And what actually really annoys me is that people were kind of taken up for her in the reunion and making it seem like she was a god dang angel. That pissed me the F off. Oh my God, that pissed me off. I was like, how is she the angel? She's one of the most negative people on this show. Anyways, so she goes in and she's like, you single-handedly ruined my confidence. You caused me to have eating problems. And also I could never be what you wanted me to be. And it was like, what? And like, I can understand a little bit, a little bit, like 5% of what she said in terms of relation to Cole. In terms of the part where she says, I couldn't be what you wanted me to be, I could sort of kind of understand that because Cole was literally upfront with her, like, listen, you know, you're not physically what I usually date. He even said that. He was very upfront with that feeling. However, I think ever since that point, she just kept reiterating that in her mind. And that's all she could hear. I don't think she ever actually was able to look past that and actually grow with him. I think she was just very much so stuck on just that. So yeah, um, she says all of that and she, you know, walks away. Cole is left at the altar and her friends and family start clapping, which I thought was just so wrong. In the reunion, Bartise was actually the person that actually brought that up, which was surprising. <laughs> he brought it up and was like, yeah, that was wrong. 
of your people to do. And one of the hosts, even she realized like, okay, that could have been a slight. It could have been like your family and friends were looking forward to you saying no. Like they knew beforehand that you were gonna say no, you know? But even if it wasn't necessarily something that they knew was gonna happen, it was still really wrong of them to do. Like, why would you clap for that? That's why I say to women, be very mindful of who you have in your camp, who you have as your supposed support, because they could be your echo chamber and also be having their own secret wishes to see you miserable and see you single and not see you in a happy relationship. So just be mindful of that. Now with Zinnab, unfortunately her parents passed. So that's kind of all she has. And she does have a sister in England, she said. But it was just so wild how that just, it, what? Like I, I was very confused. And when I think Cole had brought up the fact that he didn't reach out to her because it was like, I don't understand what's going on. I was genuine confusion, genuine confusion look on my face. <laughs> I was so like, what just happened? But honestly, when it got to the reunion, it was really just a back and forth of Zinnab talking about the same thing that she said to him at the altar. But it was like, I didn't see any of this or like little to none of this during the episodes of the show. What are you talking about? Did we watch the same show? Like, I, I'm very confused. He didn't reach out to her. Obviously she didn't reach out to him, but I think they were just not good together. Personally, I feel like Cole wasn't really necessarily ready to be in a relationship period, but I definitely think that when it comes to Zinnab, she was not ready to be in any relationship with anybody. She has major issues. I, I'm, therapy is needed. I'm not even joking. I think she really needs to talk through some of those problems. I'm being very serious with that. I'm not making therapy out to be a joke at all. I think it works. However, she needs it. I really think she needs to talk through some of her problems because whatever happened to her in the past before this process, it clearly is still playing in her mind. And yeah, it just, I think she needs some help. What was really crazy to me is that, I think it was Nancy and Raven that were on the side of her. They were like, I can't understand why you haven't taken accountability for your actions. Clearly, Zinnab is still hurt and she's my girl, but you haven't even said sorry yet. And it was like, first of all, she could have said sorry for how she said what she said at the altar. You know, I just feel like you was really just embarrassing the man at that point. That was probably one of the most embarrassing, besides the next couple anyway, that was probably one of the most embarrassing things to happen at a wedding. The partner really goes in on you. Like they choose that point, that moment to tell everything, so to speak, that's been on going on in their minds. And it's just like, why couldn't you have told me this in private? When Cole said he hadn't heard any of this, I honestly believe him. I honestly believe him because I do feel like sometimes we as women, I think we have a tendency to say things in our mind and want to say it out loud, but don't actually say it out loud. We just hope that our partner would just figure it out and read our minds and they just can't. So we get mad and it's just kind of like, you didn't actually physically tell them anything. So what the heck were you expecting from them? They're not Xavier from the dang X-Men. They can't read your dang mind, you know? So that just aggravated me that everyone was taking Zenob's side and then of course Cole he was getting kind of upset too and started crying and apologizing to her he really felt like he was the villain in the situation and he didn't want her to feel like that and you know with the whole eating thing stopping her from eating so to speak that's what she said happened and then she brought up the whole cutie story and it was like what is happening with this cutie story? But before we get into that, I think Cole should have stood his ground. He definitely should have held those tears. I'm just going to be honest because it's like, why are you crying? Why are you crying? You were the one that got done dirty as well. Even though he was kind of immature, I personally feel like he got, did bad too. I, you know? But anyways, in terms of the whole cutie story, however, she was talking about Zinnab. She was talking about how he had told her one day, 
after I guess she had gone a whole day without eating. She was about to eat, I think it was some cherries or something like that, that they were eating out the bowl together. And then she went for like two cuties little oranges and she went to eat both of them. And he was just looking at her like, oh, you gonna eat that? She was like, well, yeah, that's all I had to eat all day. But the thing is, in the show, in the reunion, she makes it seem as though he's telling her, don't eat that. You shouldn't eat it. Like you shouldn't be eating at all. Like you need to lose weight. Like that's how that was coming across in the reunion. But when we actually get to see the footage, that's not what the heck happened. <laughs> so that's why I think it kind of verifies what I said about Zinub. I think she makes things up in her head and then she portrays them as being real. I'm just gonna be honest on that one. Now, in the scene that we get to see the footage, is that he's just like, oh, we have a dinner reservation. Why don't you just hold off? Cause you're gonna ruin your appetite. And she's just like, well, I haven't eaten all day. And he's just like, well, I offered you that pokey bowl. Is it pokey or poke? I don't know. Well, I offered you that bowl to eat, you know, the one that he had, but she was like, we already had that the other day. I didn't want to have it again, yada, yada. And it was just like, well, he tried to feed you. He tried to offer you his food. You said no. So how is that him telling you that you shouldn't eat at all? It was just, I'm, I don't understand. I, I don't understand at all. We're gonna move on to the next couple child because ooh, Zinnab and Cole just, they took me out, okay? But this next couple, oh, they took all my energy child. All of it, okay? Nancy and Bartise. So Nancy and Bartise were probably one of the most toxic couples on the show this time around. I even said that in my part one video and I still think that because it's true. Like you get to see how they interact with each other and you know, we get to the altar and pretty much Nancy, I believe she had said yes and Bartise had said no. And it was like, okay, that was to be expected. Bartise, I was expecting to say no, but I was also expecting a no from Nancy because I personally feel like she, even though he said, okay, this is why the words and actions have to match up because you can say one thing about being there present in the relationship and how you're gonna do better and love her. And when you get to the altar, you really wanna marry them. But when it comes to your actions, it's pretty much kind of like the complete opposite, you know? So Nancy, I think she wanted to believe him. Honestly, I, I personally feel like she actually wholeheartedly believed this man was gonna say yes at the altar. And that's what is the messy part. Nancy was lied to, but the thing is, you could kind of see the type of person Bartise was leading up to that, to know that he was gonna say what he said, which was no, and that he was gonna play you. I'm just gonna be honest. Even her brothers, her brother, okay, was even like, no. It's a no for me, dog. They were so hard on him, and it's because I knew they smelled blood in the water, and I knew good and well they knew that this man was full of ish. I, I'm just going to be honest. He was full of ish, okay? But the thing is, what gets me is that they were trying their hardest to not really say anything, I feel, because they didn't want to come between him and Nancy. I think they were trying to be supportive brothers, but I think they knew behind the scenes that this wasn't gonna end well. But in terms of after Barty says no, Nancy walks away and the brother automatically, he's already mad. He's already ready to beat Bartise's behind, okay? So he whispers to the mom, he's just like, why are we here? We're just wasting our time. Like he was mad, you know? Like why are we even at this wedding for you just to say no? been pissed too if i'm going to be honest i would have been hella mad if i was especially nancy's family member and i came all the way to that dang wedding just for this man to say no playing games i would have been pissed so rightfully so i understand his feelings now we get outside nancy bartice they're trying to talk about why he said no right nancy's trying to hold her emotions back and not cry and break down but thing is i know she was on the verge of tears because that's hella embarrassing for you to say yes and then right after that your man says no oh hell no nah. but we're gonna move on so they're trying to talk and her mom comes out with a vengeance like ready to beat him to the ground with her brothers like <laughs> she was ready and what's funny is that even when i think bartice went to meet nancy's family for the first time especially her mom 
Her mom even outrightly said, like, listen, I'm nice, but I mean business when it comes to my kids. I will come for you, okay? I will come for you. So I saw that in her eyes in that moment. I was scared for Bartiz. I was like, please don't hit him, please. <laughs> you know, I was just like, oh it was scary but she ends up walking away they finally get a chance to talk and it was like Artis, what what are you talking about he tried to give an explanation and nancy wasn't hearing none of it i think she was already in her mind done and she even said that like listen you gaslit me you gaslit the hell out of me and i'm, I'm done with the situation but not before, not before her brother comes out and it's just like, I knew this was gonna happen. He is ready to fight, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. He was ready to beat, okay? That's all I can say. It was just so interesting. Even the little brother was like, yeah, I didn't wanna be right. You know, I didn't wanna be right. I wanted to believe that this was gonna work out, but he knew, like I said, he knew. And that verified to me. I was like, you know this man is full of BS. Why didn't you say something, you know? But he didn't want to be right. And I think that's why he didn't say anything. So that whole situation was crazy. I'm happy that Nancy walked away from that situation though, because he was just gonna waste your time, hun. Honestly, that whole show was a waste of your time with him. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest. But when I saw them in the pods together and how they interacted, I personally feel like she would have probably been better off with Andrew. However, I feel like she probably would have come to the same conclusion. And I think that she probably would have had the same result, except I think she would have been the person to say no. The wildest moment I think with Andrew was when he proposed and basically Nancy was like, yeah, no, I see a life with Bartiz pretty much. But I don't think she mentioned his name. She just was like, yeah, nah. But Andrew, he was saying that he took it personal, but when it came to his like individual interview, it was like, okay did you really feel emotionally attached to this person because it don't look like it you know he tries to put eye drops in his eye i guess his eyes were hurting but i feel like you know if you were crying why would you need to put eye well i guess if it was after he was crying you know but it was like why are you putting eye drops in your eye before there's even tears? Like, I don't, I don't understand. So that was wild to me. <laughs> it was like, Andrew, come on now. But another thing that I forgot to mention when it came to Andrew is that when I think Nancy realized that Bartise was kind of pulling away from her a little bit, she went to vent to Andrew about it. And I was like, sis, what are you doing? At the beginning, like I said in this video, like some things in your relationship, you just keep to your dang self. Because some men in particular, they find any openings they can to just squeeze yourself into the little cracks, okay? Trust. So she, I feel, was just opening the door for him to come in. Like, I'm just gonna be honest. It wasn't even a crack. She just opened the door and was like, come on. That's how I felt about that situation. That conversation they had, it was like, what are you doing, you know? It was already weird enough that y'all off by yourself talking and laughing and your supposed fiance is off by himself and it's just looking hella weird. I just thought that was an interesting interaction. I thought I would mention that. But let's move on past the wedding, okay? Even though Bartise was about to get his butt whooped, okay? Move on to the reunion. Bartise and Nancy, I feel, didn't really have much to say to each other. However, you could clearly tell that Bartise he was definitely doing what he does, okay? Doing what he probably did before this whole show because Nancy had some things to say about him being with a tall blonde chick after they had finished wrapping up the show. And it was like, why do y'all care? It was so weird. Like all the girls and then also some of the guys, they were like, oh yeah. And it was like, why is that any of y'all business? <laughs> you know, it's just strange to me. Anyway, and of course, you know, all the other uh, couples, they were looking at Bartise like, oh, you should have kind of told her differently if you weren't gonna actually say yes at the altar and blah, 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 blah. And it was like, 
shut up. <laughs> just let this man move on with his life. <laughs> I personally feel like he should have gotten a nice butt whooping at that wedding or a nice beat down from his, uh, from Nancy's family, honestly. And then I would have felt vindicated, honestly. That was pretty much Love is Blind season three in a nutshell. This was a interesting one. I think season three was definitely a much bigger hot mess than season two or season one. I feel like season one wasn't really that crazy compared to this. I, I'm just going to be honest. It was like, why are any of you guys together? I would just like to know, you know? The only couples I feel that were like, you know, like they made sense was SK and Raven and then Matt and Colleen. Even though I do think both of them need to work on things. Yeah. It's like, I personally feel like only them two really made sense the other ones i think alexa and brennan even though they make sense i do think that you know what let me take it back let me add alexa and brennan to that list because i feel like they made sense however when it came to brennan i feel like he needs to get more of a backbone and put his foot down a little bit more when it comes to alexa that's just how i feel alexa i feel like she needs to tone down the bossiness just a little bit okay a tad i'm not saying to change herself completely just bring it down a notch now, when it comes to Raven, I think she has a tendency to be super serious. And even though she did show a playful side to SK, it was just kind of like, I feel like you could show that a little bit quicker. I personally didn't really have much to say to her. SK didn't really have much to say about him either in terms of advice. Colleen, I definitely think she needs a backbone and she needs to find her voice especially since her and Matt are now married, she definitely needs to find herself because once you lose yourself, honey, she hard to find, okay? She gonna be hard to reclaim. So she needs to find that real quick. When it comes to Matt, I think he might need to have like some anger management classes. I'm not trying to be funny when I say that. I do think he might have some issues there. When it comes to Zenob, like I said, she has a tendency to make things up and turn things around to work and fit her narrative. I personally feel like she needs therapy as well, but I think that she definitely has some insecurities that she needs to work on, some major ones, okay? Now with Cole, I think he could definitely work on the whole maturity thing, but after getting done so dirty at the altar like that by Zanub, I don't know if he'd even reach that point of even being married or being with someone for a hot minute after this. I'm just gonna be honest. But Nancy, I didn't really have much to say. I would just say, Nancy, stop being so dang trusting of these people. Like, just, mm. Even the way she was talking to Andrew, you could tell she trusted that he didn't have no ulterior motives just by talking to her. And it was like, sis, you can't be this unguarded, you know? It just, I'm gonna need you to put up some type of walls. <laughs> just some, you know? So I would say Nancy needs to work on trusting people too easily. Now with Bartiz, Definitely maturity. Cole and Bartiz, I feel, had a lot in common, which is why I found it kind of interesting that he came to his defense. It kind of made sense, you know, at the reunion anyway. But yeah, I would say that Bartiz definitely needs to work on that maturity factor. I don't think he was ready to be on this show at all. Uh, at least Cole, I feel, was kind of sort of ready, but Bartiz, I don't think he should have been on the show at all just saying but that's going to be it for part two to uh love is blind season three hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you did let me know your thoughts down below if you disagree with anything i had to say you can let me know in the comments but those are my thoughts i'm probably not going to change them <laughs> but you could still let me know in the comments i'll catch y'all in the next one peace